Coming up, Zion wills his team to a win, and the Nets get a nail-biter over the Hawks for their 10th straight dub. This is Locked On Game to Game, NBA. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game NBA, local experts taking you through the biggest stories on the hardwood. I am your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. We're ready to recap all the action for you from last night. We're going to start out with a bit of a scary throwback to the Mouse at the Palace after a scuffle between Orlando's Mo Wagner and Detroit's Killian Hayes brings both team benches into that scuffle. Locked On Pistons and Locked On Magic have more on the future implications. It was another disappointing effort, and the Magic really lost everything, including the fight. This is Philip Rosenreich, the host of Locked on Magic. And while all the national headlines will rightly be on this skirmish that happened with 33 seconds left in the second quarter between Mo Wagner and Killian Hayes, a skirmish that had the Magic's bench almost completely empty and will surely bring some suspensions to this team that just needs a little boost of energy. The Magic lost this game long before then and really never fought back in a 121-101 loss to the Detroit Pistons. The Pistons, like the Los Angeles Lakers on Tuesday night, were first to every loose ball. They were first to everything uh, and just out-efforted and outplayed the Orlando Magic once again. All the good vibes from the winning streak are not there anymore, and the team is struggling to find it again and showing their frustration. Yes, there was fatigue because this was a really tough back-to-back coming from Orlando to Detroit, but the Magic have to be better. We know the Magic can be better, and frankly, we got to raise the standard around here a little bit more. I'm being faced with a dilemma here, guys. Host of Locked On Pistons podcast, Kuka Hill here. Look, the Pistons... Look, I... The Pistons dominated this win. They got a really good win, played one of their better games of the year after a historic collapse against the Los Angeles Clippers the other night after playing a really good 45 minutes. They really needed this win, and they punched Orlando in the mouth early and never looked back. Now, speaking of punching, um, I don't know if you guys saw it. You guys may not have seen it, um, but Killian Hayes is probably gone for a few games. Uh, Mo Wagner, Steve Nashed them into the sideline. You know, I probably would have reacted the exact same way, um, and Killian got back up and, you know, this one I would have done, you know, it's something I would have done. Now that doesn't mean it was the right thing to do at all, but Killing got back up, you know, it looked like he w- tried to push him in the back, but you know, got a little bit of the neck, neck area, you know, and it, it wasn't all good. He got ejected. So be tuned tomorrow to, you know, find out how long we're going to be without Killian Hayes, but great win by the Pistons. The Wizards have strung together three wins, most recently against an injury-riddled Phoenix team on Wednesday. Locked on Suns and Locked on Wizards bring us the details from both sides. Not a lot of good answers for the Phoenix Suns without Devin Booker. Brendan Clean here with Locked On Suns coming to you after a 127 to 102 loss by the Suns in Washington, D.C. on the second night of a back to back. They got a season high 31 out of DeAndre Ayton. Those nights are becoming more and more frequent for DA. But other than that, they did not do what was going to be necessary. Not enough on the offensive end from other players. And again, losing the rebound battle and allowing a mediocre team to score in bunches on you. The Suns were outscored by 16 in this game, and Kyle Kuzma, Kristaps Porzingis, and Rui Hachimura stack up to uh, over 70 combined points in this game. Without Devin Booker, that's just not going to cut it. They need to bring more competitive spirit to these games. Otherwise, those categories are going to keep going in the wrong direction, and they're going to keep losing. For more on these Suns, listen to Locked On Suns. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Brandon Scott again from Locked On Wizards. The Washington Wizards win their third game in a row tonight, beating the Phoenix Suns at home 127-1-0. to Two. Now, the Phoenix Suns were without their top scorer, Devin Booker, and the Wizards were without their franchise player, Bradley Bill. So how did the Washington Wizards win this game? Simple. Defense and points in the paint. Anytime you score 60 points in the paint, you're going to win the game. And they held on to the paint tonight and did not let go of it. But defensive-wise, seven steals, five blocks. And Daniel Gafford, who actually started again in a tall lineup, led the way with three blocks. So this tall lineup led by West Sansell Jr., where Kyle Kuzma plays at the three, Daniel Gafford and KP switched the four or the five works. So the Wizards play again Friday night at 7 o'clock at Orlando. Thank you for watching and have a good night. The Nets hold off the Hawks for a one-point win in Atlanta last night. Locked on Nets talking over their 10th straight victory. And Locked on Hawks goes over a close loss. 
a nail biter in Atlanta for the Brooklyn Nets. I'm Adam Arbick with the Locked On Nets podcast, 108 107. Brooklyn survives to win their 10th straight game in a row. Combined with the Milwaukee Bucks loss, guess what? The two seed in the Eastern Conference. The Brooklyn Nets have now won 14 out of their last 15 games, and they now hold a 22 and 6 record following the one and six start to their NBA season. They continue to roll. And in this game, the theme has been about the formula that has worked for them so well under Jock Vaughn, having balance, getting players involved with Kevin Durant being a key facilitator. And then Kyrie Irving, man, just working the magic 15 points in the fourth quarter of this one came out firing two triples, baseline jumper, full bag of tricks, full wizardry in and around the basket, elevating, hanging, levitating, and getting those shots to fall. Kevin Durant chipped in his usual performance, 9-9 nine and nine at the free throw line in this one as well. It, it really was a unique circumstance here where Atlanta coming off a back-to-back or finishing their back-to-back, they should have been depleted, and they were from a roster standpoint. No Trey Young, no Capella, no Hunter. It's the exact formula for a, quote, easy win. And I think a lot of what happened early in this game was reflective of that for the Brooklyn Nets. Did a great job closing out the second quarter to make sure they got themselves back into this ball game, down seven, and then came out in the third, won that quarter by 10 points. So there's a team that has not only showed chemistry and continuity, it's also shown conviction and the ability to take the blow, respond, and then lean into their superstars to dominate. We'll continue to break down these games as the Brooklyn Nets are becoming a bit of a jogger knot in the Eastern Conference over on the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello, friends. My name is Brad Rowland, and Atlanta Hawks fall at the hands of the Brooklyn Nets by a one-point margin on this Wednesday in a heartbreaker for Atlanta. The Hawks played quite well, given the state of their roster, down three starters, including Trey Young, in this game. The Hawks led for a large portion of the contest, but uh, in the end, it was too much Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, and the Hawks were unable to close the door at the very, very end. A controversial non-timeout for the Hawks, a definite talking point at the end of this game. The Hawks uh, decided to go quickly. Instead, John Timmer had a shot in the air that would have won the game, but it went begging at the very end and the Hawks were unable to pull off the upset at home with this loss the Hawks fall below the 500 mark for the first time in a while and the Hawks will be looking to even the score again when it comes to the standings on Friday but for, for now a game that was not exactly a bad performance for the Hawks actually they played pretty well in this one but uh, not quite enough on this night we'll have a full breakdown of the game and more on the Lots of Hawks podcast coming up a career night for Zion gets the New Orleans Pelicans a win this is locked on game to game NBA Today's edition of Locked On Game to Game is brought to you by Bet Online, the number one spot for all of your online sports betting needs. No matter what sport you are interested in, if you want the latest live odds and prop bets, you can head over to betonline.net. It's where the game starts. Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game NBA. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. Zion coming of age right before our eyes. He has a career-high 43 points. He scores the final 14 points for New Orleans as they down Minnesota by one. Locked On Timberwolves and Locked On Pelicans go over the matchup that went down to the wire. The Timberwolves were that close to what would have been their biggest upset of the season so far. The Wolves fell to the New Orleans Pelicans by one point behind a career-high performance from Zion Williamson. I'm Ben Beacon, host of the Lockdown Wolves podcast. The Timberwolves led the Pelicans for most of the game on Wednesday, and uh, we had a fun kind of third, fourth quarter battle between Anthony Edwards and Zion Williamson, even guarding each other at times down the stretch in the fourth quarter. And Jaden McDaniels had an outstanding game for Minnesota, both offensively and defensively. Did a great job on Zion early in the game, but as the game went on, Williamson started to take over in his first game back after missing three games due to health and safety protocols. Ant was great down the stretch, too. It came down to a final possession. Zion hit a free throw. Pelicans up one. Anthony Edwards missed a tough baseline jumper on the left side of the floor as the buzzer sounded the Pelicans one by one. We're going to break it all down in the postgame podcast. Make sure to subscribe to Lockdown Timberwolves for all things Wolves. Is this the game we can say Zion Williamson has arrived I'm Jake Madison, host of Locked On Pelicans and Locked On NBA. The Pels win 119-118 over the Minnesota Timberwolves, and it might be a game we look back on and say that's when Zion Williamson became a superstar. In a tight back-and-forth game, Zion put the team on his shoulders, finished with a career-high 43 points, and scored the final 14 points for New Orleans. He was absolutely unstoppable, and even three-time Defensive Player of the Year, Rudy Gobert, didn't have an answer. Repeatedly in the second half, Zion went right at Gobert and eventually 
actually fouled him out of the game. He flat out carried the Pelicans to this win. I was asked the other day if the number one seed is realistic for New Orleans. Well, when you have a guy playing at an MVP level like Zion and the depth the Pelicans have, rookie Dyson Daniels played excellent defense on Anthony Edwards to force a potential game-winning miss. And I say, of course it's realistic then. Miami's back above 500 after they took down the Lakers on Wednesday. Locked on Lakers and Locked on Heat are both in with the details. The Zena Kamenetsky co-host of Locked on Lakers podcast and the Lakers lose 112-98 to the Heat in Miami. Second end of a back-to-back, a game where fatigue really did seem to be a factor for the Lakers mentally and physically. You could tell in the turnovers, 26 for the Lakers, which Miami converted into 31 points, only six turnovers for Miami. So that discrepancy was pretty revealing. The turnovers also played a role in Miami, having 52 points in the paint. And Miami had 10 offensive rebounds, which they converted into 19 second chance and, frankly, third chance points. Uh, The Lakers did rally in the fourth quarter, sparked by Troy Brown Jr. from behind the arc and Juan Toscano Anderson, remember him? But ultimately, there was not enough energy or execution for the Lakers to ultimately bring the comeback home. A lot more to get into, so make sure you are subscribing to the Locked on Lakers YouTube channel that you make Locked on Lakers your first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Miami Heat lost a big lead but held on for a big win against the Lakers on Wednesday. I'm Wes Goldberg from Locked on Heat. After leading by as many as 22 points, the Heat appeared to be on their way to an easy win, but the Lakers stormed back in the fourth quarter, cutting the lead to seven points with four minutes to go. The Lakers had the ball with a chance to further eat into the lead, but Miami's defense stepped up. Caleb Martin stole a LeBron James pass, and that led to a clutch. Tyler Hero three-pointer from the corner to put the Heat back up 10 with two minutes left in the game. The Heat went on to win 112-98. to Jimmy Butler had 27 points. Bam finished with 23 points and 14 rebounds, playing almost the entire second and a half and Tyler Hero had 18 points and nine assists on a night that the Heat were without Kyle Lowry. The Heat improved to 18 and 17 and will begin a five game trip on Friday in Denver. For more on tonight's win, tune into Locked On Heat on YouTube, Odyssey, or wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game NBA. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. Make sure you are subscribed to Locked On NBA and, of course, your favorite team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts from. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.